Hello and welcome everyone. Today I've got a special treat and a special mod. Uh, today I'm going over Moro's Indomitable Duo, and this is Rove Gaming bringing you this mod showcase. So first off, the most simplest thing is we have a storage box. Um, a trike skull storage box trophy stand. Now that just looks cool. Now this mod is extremely intricate. Um, so this is where you craft all your stations at. So we have, okay, so under structures and then crafting, if you use folders like I do, is where you will find the this mod's structures. We have the DNA extractor. We have Moro's engineering station, which is the starting point for the buildings. Uh, we have a DNA sequencer. We have the DNA synthesizer. The GMH incubator. And we have Lockwood's Trike Skull Monument. So this mod uh, stations all start with the Moro's Engineering Station. Um, so you have cementing paste, crystal, element dust, metal ingots, and spark powder. And then you can see the rest of them pop up in the station. The reason why they are here is obviously I have uh, creative mode on. Um, but for the DNA extractor, um, is cementing paste, crystal, electronics, metal ingots, polymer, spark powder, and straight electrical cable. This DNA synthesizer is cementing paste, crystal, element dust, metal ingot, and spark powder. Uh, for the sequence, the DNA sequencer, we have cementing paste, crystal, element dust, metal ingot, and spark powder. Um, a, same with the GMH incubator. Uh, the Lockwood Trike Skull Monument needs the Trike Bone Helmet. Um, so that's how that'll look. Uh, so the engineering station runs off of gasoline. And then we have composites. And that is where you make your power cells. So you're going to need a decent amount of element dust to get this sort of thing to get this going. Um, I, uh, I've had power cells running for probably 10 minutes, 20 minutes now. And it still has only used the first one, so it might run at the normal power rate or for gas, or it might run at something else uh, that's higher. But yeah, so power cells is basically what's needed in the rest of the stations. Then we have the DNA extractor. So you get certain items like the T-Rex arm or the Alpha uh, Tyrannosaur tooth. So you can use things like eggs, fertilized eggs, alpha drops, etc. Uh, even the T-Rex arms will work. What it does then is it'll turn it into a Petri dish. Uh, this is not pure DNA. Uh, after we go after here, synthesizer. So after you have enough of the Petri dish, you can go here and create pure DNA. So, it, again, it needs power cells to run, but you bring the Petri dishes over and then you'll be able to craft these. So, to show you real quick how it looks when this turns on. So, I don't know about you, but I think this, uh, the model and the animation looks absolutely superb. So, for the sync, uh, synthesizer, that's the animation to turn on, and that turns it off. Now, after you've done the synthesizer, you've got all your little DNA, your pure DNAs, then you can go to the sequencer. 
and you can create the genomes and you can create the eggs. So for the Indoraptor egg, you need you need a rapt a fertilized raptor egg. And for the Indominus Rex egg, you need a fertilized Rex egg. Now, there is also a uh, Generation 1 Endoraptor, and there's a Gen 2 Endoraptor. So, that's how uh, you've got the completed DNA here, and then you've got the eggs. Now, I've already done and set up the eggs. So I've got one of each, and this is really cool. So this, these also run off of the power cells. Now, the only eggs that go in here are the ones that are created from the sequencer. And that's the animation for it. That just is lovely. Now, for these, you can turn it on. This is the animation and how it sounds. So it's really cool here. Um, so we've got the Indom, the Indominus Rex egg. So the only eggs that go in here are the genetically modified, the crafted eggs. So how you do it is you bring in the egg, you drop it in. There's no level. Um, it seems to be random. And then you click hatch egg. I'll pop the egg like that. And that'll spit it out. Then you can imprint it, just like that. The easiest way of doing the these uh, creatures is by uh, manufacturing them. You can find them out in the wild, but from what I understand, they are extremely rare. Uh, this is the level 103, and it already has 25,000 health. So they, they can be decently... Uh, Decently strong. Now, since that was a nice colored uh, Indom, let's go to the first generation Indoraptor. That one doesn't make noise popping out, but even at level 133, he's already got 70, uh, 7,600 health. So it can be decently strong. Now to carry on, we have the Indoraptor Gen 2. He doesn't make much noise either. Ooh, you look pretty. You're 103, and you have 5,400 health. So, they are pretty strong. I've skipped past making the actual eggs since I already had everything, and it seemed to have been fine. Now to showcase the actual creatures as they are adults. So the Indom uh, Raptor Gen 2, uh, this one at least has some really lovely colors. This one doesn't have any colors. Um, it's kind of a, its own thing it seems, with color schemes. Now the Indom, Perhaps the only regions that really display is region 4 and 5. Or they just stay the same color unless it's male. So we'll see how it goes. But let's go with the uh, Indominus first. 
I really love the base of this one step. A left click is bite. Right click is a fear roar. C is cloak. X is tail swipe or tail attack. If you hold alt and then X, there we go. Alt and X is stomp. So middle mouse button is swipe. R is supposed to pick up, but it hasn't worked for me so far. Maybe I've just tried things that are too big or too small. So in the color me in the wheel menu, we have a rest menu. We have a rest option, which gives him a healing buff, and he'll basically stay like that until uh, we tell him to stop. Alt-C is a courage buff. So, there we go. And that is the Indominus Rex. Now, both the Indoraptor and the Indoraptor Gen 2 basically have the same things. So, it has a nice sprint. It's got a lovely lunge when it's in this mode. You can change this mode by right-clicking. Left click, standing attack, back down. C button is a roar. When as a quadruped, pressing X is echolocation which gives a debuff to the target and it also helps uh, to notice where they are a little better. Control when a quadruped is heat vision. When a bipedal, X is a raptor jump. And when a biped control gives a um, defense buff, you can't move when this is activated. And there's the jump when a biped. And there you have it. That's this is one heck of a uh, mod for the Indominus Rex and the Indoraptor. This was Rovate Gaming showing off Moro's Indomitable Duo. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as it really does help. And Thank you all for stopping by. See you all later.